I'm Joel Hastings with Holstein World and Dairy Business. We're here today at Fiscalini Farms near Modesto. We're talking with Brian Fiscalini, who's the fourth generation. He manages the dairy and is a partner in the business. Earlier, Brian told us a little bit about how helpful he has found genomic testing his uh, his herd, all registered Holsteins pretty much, and he's going to share a little bit about his uh, genomic testing experience and how that's changed the business practices here at the dairy. Brian? So we started genomic testing early on in 2009 and 2010, and one of the things that we found that was extremely valuable was the reliability of the information and really seeing that what genomic values were given to the animals is what they were actually doing in the milk barn and out here in the pen. Um, another large management change that we made was the amount of replacement animals that we were carrying at any one time. So we reduced our replacement population by 600 head and when we did that we noticed that the amount of ground that we farm really stretched us that much further to have enough feed on hand and not have to purchase as, as much outside feed from our neighbors. The other thing it did is it just made all of the pens that much more spacious. Uh, we weren't overcrowded and we really gave all of our young animals the best chance at success because we were keeping the cream of the crop and putting them in an environment in which they could be successful. You mentioned that uh, before genomic testing, the average uh, number of two-year-olds in your herd was pretty significant. You've uh, basically got an older herd now. Tell us a little bit about how that has worked out for you. Yeah, when we started genomic testing before we really had any results back or we could put a lot of weight into the numbers that we were seeing, about 48% of our herd was first lactation animals. And we had about a 44% coal rate. So we were culling older animals who might not have had a chance to really prove themselves because we had so many young animals coming in place. Um, today, that number of two-year-olds in the population is 23%, and 56% of our herd is third lactation or older. So when you, um, when you look at the economics of the business, we're keeping older animals around longer. We have a lower inventory cost, and from a herd perspective, we have a lower feed cost per hundredweight when you include dry cows and heifers because we have less heifers in the herd. That's a great story. Tell us a little bit about your sire selection strategies. Uh, what are you looking for in the bulls that you select and then how do you make your matings? When we go and, and select a new bulls, um, about every three or four months we change the lineup. The two big characteristics that we're looking at are, are you know, the, the milk quality part of it, the pounds of milk, pounds of fat, pounds of uh, protein, and then the fertility numbers as well, daughter pregnancy rate. Um, those are things that are really big for us because obviously we're in the business of selling milk, and so that is important to look at when that's your largest revenue stream. Uh, the next thing is is fertility. When you get cows pregnant, you give more milk in a shorter period of time, and you can keep cows around longer if you have good reproductive results. And we've just found that those are two areas of the business that we've focused on when it comes to sire selection, uh, as well as feet and legs and, and some other body type characteristics. Um, but mainly, you know, milk and fertility have been the two big drivers for us.